Descartes' statement of his ontological argument is found towards the bottom of the second page, depending on which translation you're reading of the meditations, but towards the end of the second page of the fifth meditation where he's talking about, or at least his stated uh, subtitle is the existence of, mater uh, of material objects and, you know, again, the existence of God. And we find that he's at, towards the end of that second page, he starts talking about the idea of God. And, he, and I think we find there the beginnings of his ontological argument. He says, certainly the idea of God, or a supremely perfect being, is one which I find within me just as surely as the idea of any shape or number. So he's saying, look, I have an idea of God. The idea is that of that idea is that of a supremely perfect being omniscient, omnipotent, you know, we've been through all the properties of God, but he says he has that idea in him just as sure as any idea that he has of any shape or number, shape being a geometric shape. So we're beginning to see he's making an analogy between God and mathematical objects. Okay. And my under continues, and my understanding that it belongs to his nature, that is to God's nature, that he always exists. But, and that is no less clear and distinct than is the case when I prove of any shape or number that has some property belonging to its nature. Here's the point, I think, that he's telling us. Well, look, with regard to shapes and numbers, geometric shapes and numbers, we're, we know that they have you know, certain properties are part of its nature think of like a triangle having three sides you know, we understand that that's part of its nature well according to Descartes what he's telling us is that just as sure he is as of things like that a triangle has three sides he's also sure that belonging to God's nature is his existence continues. Hence, if it turned out that not everything on which I've meditated in these past days is true, in other words, he's beginning to hedge his bets. He says, listen, even if some of the things that I got in the last few days, not quite right, that is, maybe my cosmological argument doesn't work. And he continues, I ought to still regard the existence of God as having at least the same level of certainty as I have hitherto attributed to the truths of mathematics. Meaning, I can take God's existence to be as certain as any of the stuff in mathematics. So the idea is if he can in this way prove God's existence... Well, he accomplishes what he was trying to, at least one of the things he was trying to, in the meditations, that is, to prove that God's existence. And the second thing he does is, if he proves God's existence, God's benevolent, right? He's supremely perfect. And a supremely perfect being, a benevolent being, would not be a deceiver and would not allow there to be an omnipotent deceiver like Descartes' evil genius. And that's how he can get out he can get from out of his solipsism to his knowledge of the external world. But let's now turn to the details of this argument and try to figure out exactly what Descartes is saying and what he's trying. And, and he has a lot to say in this fifth meditation. It's going to help out. But let's just try to look at the basic concepts and see if we can put together a good argument.